God bless you guys. I guess Father's Day takes us this way and that way and whatever else, but uh, I'll, I'm going to preach this. And I just believe that God is taking this ministry in a direction. I think he's taking it to different places. And there's always battles, okay, uh, when God tries to take us to different levels. Amen? And you got to believe that. And we can't look at people. We can't worry about those things. What we need to worry about and what we need to stay focused on is who? God. Amen? And when we do that we can surely believe that God will come through. I just want to, before uh, I start, I want you to open up to Matthew 21 and 42. And while you're opening up to Matthew 21 and 42, uh, I want you all to remember, by the way, um, prayer, I guess, is at 5 o'clock tonight. However, I want you to know in advance that pastor will not be here, Evelyn will not, will not be here. And the reason is, is because she has to attend to her mother this week. Her mother's going in for operation, so we do ask that you guys would keep her in prayer. Amen. And her mother and Evelyn, as she travels, we got to take her to catch the uh, train. So we're asking that you guys would keep her in prayer. Amen. All right. As well as her mother as she goes in for that operation. So uh, just keep that in, in mind. And uh, in, in, in our absence, we ask for your presence, amen, so that this Sunday night would be covered um, in prayer. So, at any rate, Matthew 21 and 42. You know, uh, the Lord has really been dealing with me in the subject of Christ and Christ alone. Really has been dealing with me in the subject that... Uh, Jesus Christ is God, that we need to preach Jesus and Jesus only, Christ and him crucified. And we need to be very careful that when we preach, we make sure that everything that we preach points to Jesus. Amen? Amen. And I'm believing that, not sermons to entice us to believe that we're gods or we have the power of God, that sermons that we preach would believe that the power of God can work through us, but it doesn't make us divinity. You understand what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of stuff going on out there these days that uh, we have to be careful that we don't buy into. Amen? And uh, I believe there are deceptions and everything else that if we uh, succumb to it, we could be deceived. And we need to be careful that when we, everything we do, we, it needs to point to Christ couple of few weeks ago we started preaching on believe and believing and believing that Jesus is a savior is one of the key steps to salvation and how first we need to believe uh, that he is the son of God that he died on the cross for our sins and when we become children of God and we believe and we get saved how we have to begin to trust you can't trust something that you've never leaned on it's when you lean on something or somebody that you can then trust that. In other words, I could lean on this podium, this podium fall down, which means I can't trust it again to lean on it, okay? I could lean on this. I can trust that this is going to hold me. And it is through that relationship and the building of our relationship with God that we begin to trust in him and where our hope should lie, amen? Amen. That everything that we need, everything that we want, everything that God's promises are, yes and amen, that we can hope these things to be true. And that's where trust begins. It's through our testimony. It's through what God allows us to go through, the things that we're in, but not only the trials that we go through, but how God brings us out of every trial. Amen. I think Timothy said, you know, that he, he had been through, but God had delivered him from what? From them all. That there's nothing that God did not deliver them from in their trials. The trials are many, but God has delivered me from them all. And I like that because even in your life, at times you have wondered how God was going to keep you. You've wondered how God is going to make a way. But somehow or another, God made a way. God made a way. Even in the worst of times, God made a way when maybe you lost a home. Maybe you were getting ready to lose a home. 
no matter what it was, maybe uh, uh, it was an ailment, but yet you got through that thing, you know? So we got to believe, we learn to trust that God's going to bring us through. It's how David uh, be, knew that he could slay the giant. Through what? Through the afflictions of the bear and through the affliction of the wolf, that he could trust God even against the biggest that even the mightiest warriors couldn't stand against, he could stand against it. Why? Because he knew God had delivered him from other things, and that's how we learn to trust God. He knew that God would come through for him. Today, um, I want to talk about faith. But I'm going to talk about faith in a little bit different way, just like last week we, we talked about trust. But what did we talk about? We talked about trusting in what? The living God. Today, I want to talk about faith, but I want to talk about more so uh, as an acronym, faith, meaning the foundational assurance in the heart or of the heart, that we should have a foundational assurance in our heart that Jesus Christ is your father, that he will come through for you like nobody has ever come through for you before. That on this Father's Day, those that may be fatherless, you know, we're, we're uh, living in a, a fatherless nation where more and more children don't have a father. We're living in a fatherless nation where it's harder and harder for men of God to get other men of God to father them. They don't want to be bothered. Unless you bring a gift of $10,000, they don't want to, to be bothered. You bring them a gift, and then they'll say, I'll father you. You see what I'm saying? We're living in a fatherless generation today, but I want to tell you, nobody that is sitting here today that is in the kingdom of God is fatherless. We ought to know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and he is the father of you and I. So Matthew 21 and 42, and I'm not going to be long today, it says, Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected have become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is a marvelous in the eyes, in our eyes. Now, we as people have a nature to want to be sure of things, don't we? Don't you want to know, have a secure job? I know with all the unemployment going on in the world, there are people who want a secure job. And when you don't have a secure job, knowing that you're going to get a paycheck, every Friday or every other Friday or every month, whatever it is, then some people get stressed out. They get worried because their faith sometimes would be in their education or their career. So, but we like to be assured that we're going to get a paycheck every single week. That's why some people never become business owners because they don't have that assurance that they're going to get a paycheck every single week. So we like to know that our jobs are secure, our paychecks are secure. It's just nature. When we close the door at night, what do we do? We lock the doors. We put a lock because we want to be sure of our security. And it's these kind of things that make us secure. We like to keep people that we love close to us. I know our grandchildren. Very seldom do we ever just let our grandchildren just go out and play. We always keep an eye on our grandchildren because we want to be assured that they're safe. That if something happens, that we can run out there and rescue them. Amen? It's just in our nature to want to be sure of things in life. We like to plan our futures. We like to pick our jobs. We, make to, we like to make our careers. We like to make out retirement plans. In other words, we like to always be in control, don't we? We always like to be in control. But I remember when the stock markets crashed. You, you remember that? And, um, and what happened? There were people that were in these big old uh, Enron. You remember Enron? There were some people that had planned for their future their whole life. They had worked for these companies. They put tons of money away. And in one day, one day, they lost $700,000 of their retirement money. They had put all their eggs in one basket, and they lost it all. 
The only security, my friend, that you and I have is in Christ, in Christ alone. You can't worry about your retirement, your future. You don't need to worry about your kids. You need to put your kids in God's hands. Your job, you can trust the Lord to always provide that even when you work your job, it's not a man who gives you a paycheck. It's not you that earn your way. It's the Lord that allows you to benefit in these areas of life. But all education and everything that is taught to us is that we can create our own way. Even in churches today, we're being taught that if you do this and you do that and you do it this way and you sow it that way, that you can be secure. You can believe that if you give, you're going to reap. And yes, that is a kingdom principle, but we need to be sure that we don't do these things so we can benefit ourselves. And all that we do, we need to make sure that Jesus is the center of it all. Y'all know that song? Jesus is the center of it all. You know what I'm saying? I like that song because Jesus has to be the center of it all. Judah just said, I like it too, but I like it better when you don't sing it. But God bless him anyway. <laughs> Just kidding. I've done it. I've done it. I've had my part in that. I'm over it. I'm good. Thank you. Jesus is the center of it all. What we're trying to say is we need to make sure that Jesus is the center of it all. We need to make sure that when we look here, first, the first, the F is our foundational aspects of what we believe. We as people, we think that we know best for ourselves, for our children, for our future, and we make plans, don't we? And planning is good, but do you have faith that God can do it better than you can? Do you believe that if you do it the way God asks us to do it, that it'll be a sure foundation that cannot be shaken, that nothing can come against? See, faith has to be built first, understanding that Jesus is the foundation of everything. See, the one thing that I'm sure of and the one thing that I know is that all of our plans and assurances should be foundational assurances in the heart have to be centered on Jesus Christ and him alone. So, let me uh, just tell you as a builder... I understand the whole foundational thing. How many people understand at least at a, at a low level of a foundation? Well, I've got to tell you, I have built hotels. I've built parking garages. I've built houses. I've built shopping centers. And with all these different building projects that I've been involved in since I was 18 years old, sometimes even 16, helping uncles out or whatever, I started to realize that the foundation is one of the, one of the, the, the most important aspects of the building process. They would go in there, they would clear the land, they would level the land out, and then they would begin to dig. Now, when we talk about digging, you got to understand the foundation sometimes is never seen once it's laid. It's never seen. The only way you'll ever know of if a building truly has a good foundation is when it's shaken if it stands. Ha! Huh. Come on, you want to know why people are falling away from God left and right? You want to know why it's hard to fill buildings for Jesus? Because the foundation has not been Jesus. They've been coming into the church and being taught for 10 years that it's about them. That if you sow into the God that's behind the pulpit, that God will increase your territory. And it hasn't been about building the kingdom of God. It's been about building ministries and bigger buildings while they drive Bentleys and live in $3.5 million homes and up. While they drive the best Cessna jets from place to place. Now, I'm not begrudging wealth or 
what God can do for somebody in favor, but we've got to make sure that while we're serving God, we're serving God with the foundation being that Jesus Christ died on the cross for souls to be saved. So I've learned that in the building process, the foundation has to really be the primary aspect of that building. Once you have that foundation, you can change anything with inside that building, to, but you can't change the foundation. You can't. And the bigger and the higher that building is, the deeper the foundation has to be. In other words, you can't dig down, you know, code is 30 inches. So you dig down 30 inches and you build a foundation and you build a house. Boom, two stories, you're good. But try to take and build a high rise or a skyscraper on a foundation that has been created to house a house. It's not going to last very long. The first time the earth shakes or the wind blows, it might fall over. So the foundation is a key principle to our faith. We have to understand if your faith is built on Jesus Christ, then you'll understand the words that Jesus spoke. So we have to understand that in that process, this is why we have architects, contractors, and inspectors. There are systems in place to assure us that the buildings won't collapse, um, that the elevators will work, go up and down, and as we go up, they won't fall. We've got architects and builders and inspectors in place so that when we go to sleep at night, we know that something won't catch on fire. How many people have gone to bed at night and worried that their house is going to catch on fire because of an electrical problem? How many people have gone to sleep at night in a nice comfy bed, some of them $1,500 and up? Oh yeah, people got beds like that. Believe me. Now, I'm not speaking against those things, but what I'm telling you is, is how many nights do you go, go to bed afraid that your house is going to fall in on you? You don't because there are systems that are in place. The architect, the contractor, and the inspector. Now, when I start thinking about this, I want you to know that the kingdom of God has certain things in place that you can sleep at night. That you don't need to worry that God is going to make a way. He'll make a way if you're following the system in which Jesus Christ wrote it out. Who's the architect? God is the architect. He's the creator of it all. He's the one that laid it out. Now, who's the builder? Jesus, okay, the prophets, it says, were the builders. They're the ones that laid the, fure, the, the foundation. And then who would be the inspector? Who's going to be the ultimate judge of all things? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit tests all things, amen? Ha, huh, come on now. Whether it's seen or it's not seen, you can believe that there has to be a foundation of Jesus Christ in your life. Now, I'll just, that was just the beginning. Now we're going to move forward. Because what I want to, you to see, what I want to understand today is who and what is your foundation built on. Now, in Matthew 21 here in 42, it says, Jesus said to them, we have never read in Scripture the stones that the builder rejected have become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is a marvelous in our eyes. Now, who was Jesus talking to? Jesus was talking to the educated. He was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's why they're called sad you see, you know. So they never got it. But they were the educated ones. They were the ones who had all the knowledge that they needed according to scripture. 
They were always trying to corner Jesus Christ in all that he did. They were trying to pin him down. But here he looks at him and he says, Jesus was standing right in front of them. They're talking about the Messiah. Jesus Christ that was spoken of in Isaiah and in Ezekiel and in Proverbs. They knew the scripture. But yet they rejected him. The stones the builders rejected have become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in his eyes. So we've got to be careful that we don't become so educated. We've got to be careful that we don't become so wrapped up in what we've done and what we think that we can't allow God to do anything in our life. See, that's why it talks about the humble will do what? The humble The meek will inherit the earth. So we need to realize that in ourselves, humility is not recognizing self, but recognizing Jesus Christ and what he did. And I'm going to show you guys how Christ is either your cornerstone or your capstone. (laughs) Amen. Come on. Y'all understand what I'm talking about here. By the time I get finished, and I'm telling you, I'm going to preach, but I got to be foundational even in my preaching. So it's important, so important, that we have that foundation, that foundation of Jesus Christ. The second thing, it talks about the stone that the builders rejected. Let's just talk about that stone that the builders rejected. Y'all know that song? The stone that the builder rejected. All around me is sinking sand. On Christ's solid rock I stand. Where do I go? Y'all know what I'm saying, right? Good, we got it. Now, the, the, the stone that the builders rejected. Now, I want to talk to you about this cornerstone. See, When we talk about foundations, we don't really understand cornerstones anymore. Because back in the ancient days, they did it different than we do it now. Now we call up Lafarge and we say, I want, give me 10 yards of concrete. We dig out a little hole and we make it so wide, we make it so thick, we put it so deep. And when it comes, we pour it in that hole, we smooth it out, and we put bricks on top of that thing. Or block. And that's how we do it. But the way they used to do it is they would take stones, and they would dig down, and they would hone these stones by hand, and then they would put them into the ground and put them in there in a level way. But the stone that had to be perfect, the stone that determined whether or not that building would be square and that building would be plumb was the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the most important stone that would be laid. Without that cornerstone, that building would never be straight and it would never be square, which means it would never be right. And here the Bible says that these educated men, the one that knows so good for themselves, I like to... Sometimes as a pastor, forgive me, but when you try to point people to Christ and they got the yeah but attitudes and they don't want to listen, they don't want to hear what you have to say, they can be going through hell and back, but they still won't listen, but they'll ask why is this happening, but yet nothing changes. They continue down the path that they keep going. They don't want to hear what the truth is that's holding them back. They don't have foundational Christian beliefs. But they expect God to always be there the way they want him there. And see, that's what happens with the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They thought they knew better than the Messiah himself. And it says the stone that the builders rejected. The stone that the builders rejected was a stone that was the most valuable stone in all the building process. When it was honed out at the bottom of it, it had to be perfectly flat. It couldn't be thicker on one side and thinner on the other. 
It couldn't lean to one way or the other. When it laid in that hole, that stone had to be perfectly square and perfectly fat because it determined the rest of what would be built for that building. And they would put that cornerstone in that foundation and then they would take other stones that was less valuable or less critical and they would line the base of that foundation and it was a wall that where the two would come together so that it would be square and plumb. Now they rejected Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. The stone the builders rejected. The builders rejected. So we got to look here and we got to see that faith in Jesus. The Bible says he was the, score, the, the cornerstone that the builders rejected. A lot of times, as hard as this might be, when you're rejecting the truths of God, when you're rejecting Jesus Christ and the things of God, you also are rejecting the stone, the rock, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. See, a lot of us can think we're in God, but be totally in our will and not in the will of God. And that's where the church is gone, and that's why the church has become powerless, because everybody is leaning on their own understanding, and it's time that the church gets back and says, Jesus, you are the center of it all. The question that needs to be answered today is, do you have faith in the cornerstone? Jesus is the cornerstone. So this is what the sovereign Lord says, see, I lay the stone in Zion, I tested a stone, precious cornerstone, for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Now, that's Isaiah 28 and 16. That was written hundreds of years before the Messiah ever came. Talking about that he has picked the cornerstone, that the cornerstone would be Jesus Christ. But yet, these scholars that knew Scripture so well missed the simplest of all prophecies, that the Messiah would come not to build a kingdom here on earth, but to do what? To be the king of the kingdom of heaven. See, that's where Adam and Eve went wrong. They went wrong because they didn't want knowledge of the kingdom. They didn't want to have to rely on God. You follow what I'm saying? See, they didn't need to worry about anything because originally God was the foundation. And all they had to do was walk with God daily and trust God for their supply, for their food, for their nakedness. Whatever it was that they needed, it was there. Because Jesus Christ had to be sent to redeem what Adam and Eve did. But they had all that they needed, but it wasn't good enough. Why? Because Satan came and Satan said, if you will eat of that fruit in the center of the garden, your eyes will be open. Now what would they be open to? They would be open up to the things that they weren't supposed to be indulging in. The things of right now. The things of the flesh. Am I preaching to anybody today? The things of the flesh. Because they wanted to have what they could have right now. See, when we also start looking and making our life mission is to have, have, have right here and right now, are our eyes really on Jesus Christ? We've got to be careful that we in our own knowledge and in our own wills don't seek out something other than God. Amen. From my experience in building, we got to realize that we've got to stay focused on the plan. We've got to stay focused on the plan. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 says, For no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So see, we can toil, we can go about doing our business and making our way, making our plans, one of the things that disturbs me the most 
is to hear people how they have this plan that's just laid right out. Sounds perfect. How they send their children off. Their children go to college. They get done with their degree. And then they don't even work in the department of which their degree was in. Y'all see that all the time, don't you? Or they can't get a job in what they went to school for. And you know what I like to ask the people, and it really offends them. I said, where did you get the idea that that's what you wanted to do? Well, I love to ask people that. Where did you get that idea that you should go into that? Well, I thought that teaching would be a secure job. Did you pray and ask God, did he think that it would be a secure job for you? Did God tell you to do that, or were you planning on your own? You follow me? Now all kinds of trouble's going on, and people are wondering and asking God why, but they never ask God what before is why they now got to ask the whys. So if you don't ask God the what, how can you say why? Y'all with me? What am I supposed to be doing? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to marry? You follow me? Because we do what? We build our foundations where? On ourselves. On our own knowledge. On our own beliefs. On our own structure. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And in Corinthians it says, For no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And when you lay your foundation on Jesus Christ, your heart will know that you took the right path and there will not be confusion. You won't have to justify the wise. You can say, I know that I know. I might not know what's next, but I know I'm where God has asked me to be. That's why we can go into the world. We can go into any alley. We can go wherever God has sent us and know that God is with us. Trusting in God, knowing that you're in the will, that he is the chief cornerstone, is a key principle to our faith. You have to believe God, trust God, but what you have built has to be on God. What God is trying to do now and in society now, listen to me, is tear down your will. To tear down what man has built so that it can then you can say, God, not my will. Come on now. But thy will be done. And it's a shame how people have to be shaken and how they have to lose things before they get that. I have a friend, and some of y'all know the friend, and I, he may hear this, and he may know who I'm talking about, who had lots of money saved up in the military for a long time. He gets out of the military, he can't get a job. Trying to lead him, why don't you do this, why don't you try that? He's doing this, he's doing that. But what's happening the whole time that he's just flailing about all that money that he saved, this account, that trust, that 401, this stock thing, is dwindling it away. Boom, 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 one at a time. This one's gone, okay. Now I got to try this one. Boom, Get opens that one up, okay, that's gone. And now, guess what? Some things happen, and the money that he had coming in ain't even coming in. And he's got one more thing that he could possibly cash in, and it's all over with. And you know what his response is? <laughs> you know what the response was? I think God wants me to rely on him and him alone. <laughs> wow! Wow! You could have did that three years ago. And you wouldn't have had to lose a nickel. In other words, if we would stop doing it our way, if we would stop trusting in what we've done, if we would stop trusting in what we're trying to accomplish and trust in the cornerstone, the one that has already been laid straight, has already dictated the path and the lines in which
that you're supposed to take. My friend, I'm telling you, it's an amazing thing what God could do in our life. Psalms 118 and 22 says the stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone. Now they had to know when they were rejecting Christ, they were standing, you know who sold him out? The Jews. The Jews sold him out. The ones that had all the knowledge of scripture sold him out. You got to watch for people that call themselves saved. <laughs> <laughs> they'll sell you out in a minute for their own good, for their own desires, for their flesh. Okay, I don't want to get personal. I'm going to back out of that one. People don't want to know the truth no more. People don't want to be challenged. You challenge somebody and tell them that you're looking in the wrong direction, look over this way, people don't want to hear it. But the truth of the matter is, is the Bible says that in Psalms 118, 22, that the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Y'all get that? In other words, he will either be your foundation or your end. We can look at this several ways that it's either the alpha and the omega, right? But we know he's not talking about he's my beginning and he's my end because it says the stone that the builders did what with? Rejected. So when you look at the capstone and, and in building and knowing the things that I know is that the foundation starts down here at the capstone. Y'all know you ever been to D.C. And, and did a tour down there and you see that some of these buildings have been there since 18-something or whatever and, and now see the cornerstone is something different because it's a thing of beauty. You know what I mean? It's a different stone. Everything's made of brick, and then they got this white honed stone that has a date of origination on it. That you can actually see that. When that building was constructed. But the other thing you got to realize is on the very top of these buildings, they got a capstone. The capstone is a signature of the finished product. You know? You ever see walls? They got bricks and blocks, and in the top of that wall, they got a capstone. So here he's saying that to those who didn't reject him and those that don't reject him and those that build their foundation on Jesus Christ, he's your cornerstone. But for those that reject him, he's your capstone. In other words, you're finished. <laughs> Come on now. You're finished. There's no more building he can do in your life. And then we sit back and we say this, God, why ain't you moving on my behalf? Because he's become your capstone. Because you're not following the system of the architect. You can't go against the plan and justify why it's not, God is not moving. You got to say, God, I need you. I need you to show me. I need you to illuminate to me. I need you to do in my life what needs to be done. I surrender my wants. I surrender my will. I give you my flesh today, God. Take me to a higher place. Continue to work in my life. Make me a tall building. Help us, Lord. So the learned ones that knew scripture really didn't know anything. The Messiah was standing right before them, but yet they didn't know it. Luke 20 and 18 says, everyone who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. But he on whom it falls will be crushed. Now I, want, I just want to tell you something. When you think about the stone, this is what came to my mind when I read that scripture. You'll be pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. You see, when I think about those things, I think about those whose foundation is with the rock. 
I think about those who trust in the Lord. That's because I've been preparing this all week and to hear you say, I'm not taking the only day you'll give me because I've got to go and I've got to worship God. It blesses me. Come on, you guys just don't realize that when your foundation is on the rock and you're following the systems of God, then things will happen for you. But it says that, that falls on the rock will be broken, but those that reject it will be crushed. Whoa. That is crazy. You want to know why God, and I'm going to close. Y'all want to know why Jesus stood, and they show it in the movies, you know what I'm talking about, on that podium. Pontius Pilate, saying, I wash my hands of this man. Who do you want to let go? And Pontius Pilate almost begged Jesus to answer him and make his case. But the Bible says he said not a word. Woo! When I read this scripture, it all came into play. The Bible says he is the potter and we are the clay. <laughs> I ain't never seen a potter speak to a clay pot. <laughs> Woo! No matter what you do to that rock, that clay pot cannot hurt that rock. He knew it. He didn't need to defend himself. He knew that he was the chief cornerstone and that thing that they rejected would be the thing that would crush them. Woo! You gotta understand that if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, what did he tell Peter? Upon this rock, I will build my church. In other words, God didn't fashion the children of God to be clay pots. He's fashioned us to be rocks. Woo! Boy, y'all getting this? I'm telling you. Which means that no matter what comes at you, it cannot destroy you. No matter what falls upon you, it will be shattered. Whatever tries to come against you, the word says will be crushed if it's built upon the rock. Hallelujah. Got one more scripture that I want to cover, then I want to go back to Isaiah real quick. And I'm done, I promise you. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope that I've, I'm, I'm imparting something in you that you know who you are in Jesus Christ and know who he is in your life. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2, turn there, turn there. Ephesians 2, real quick, verse 20. And I'll, actually, I'm going to start reading at verse 20. This is you and I, this is you and I. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but what? Fe fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Now, y'all need to get that. Verse 20, what? Built on what? The foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, what? The whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy what? Temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are what? Being built together to become what? A dwelling place that God lives by his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are in Christ and Christ is in you, you are now the holding place of the Spirit of God. 
And God is not going to allow you to be crushed. He's not going to allow you to be smite. He's not going to allow you to be dismayed. He's not going to allow you to be defeated. He's not going to allow the enemy to overtake his house. Hear me out. Can I, can I just have five more minutes? Okay, I'm going to take it anyway. <laughs> we was watching uh, 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 Alaska, buying Alaska. Y'all ever see that? Where people get in their little boats and they travel way up these rivers, man, where there's no electricity, there's no this, there's no that, there's no the, the other. I mean, they got an outhouse that they got to go in. They got to have a gun to hold back the, hold back the bears. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to pay three, four hundred thousand dollars for some of these little shacks. They ain't even got electricity or running water. But this guy was so bent on having himself a dog house. You know what I mean? He likes to run dogs, you know, sled dogs. And this one house was right next to the trail to where he, and it, had, it was all set up for him to have a team of, of sled dogs. And, and, and he would be able to take those dogs, hook them up, and boom, boom, they're on the trail, they're gone. They'd be able to train that easy. And his sight was so focused on what he wanted and how he wanted, he forgot about the foundational truths of that cabin. He didn't care about the foundation. He didn't care how the cabin was built. All he cared about was having a place for those dogs next to a trail. They walk into the house and where one room connected to another, there was a gap that big. And it looked like somebody had taken that spray foam. You know that spray foam you can spray in a crack and it swells and they tried to fill a hole this big with spray foam. And the wife is telling him, say, honey, Y'all got to listen to your wife sometimes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Honey, this house is foundationally bad, and look, the, the thing's falling off of it, and God knows what we have to do to get it fixed. Oh, yeah, but he said, but look, it's right next to the trail, and it can house my dogs. Couldn't even really see the truth that was before him. Is that you and I sometime in striving for what we want? That we got gaps in our lives that we try to cover over with things of this world? Forgetting the real purposes of our place here on earth? And that's to bring the kingdom to earth, to love and to nurture and to protect those that are around us. But yet, we keep trying to fill those voids with the things of our flesh. Not realizing the damage that we're about to put on those that are around us. We have to, folks, make sure that our foundational assurance is in trusting in God and Him alone to fill your voids, to fill your wants. Start praying for God to open up the door for that job. God, what job do you want me to have? God, make a way where there seems to be no way. God, raise my children up and give them direction in the way that they shall go. Not what they think they want to go or what they think they want to do, but what God would have them to do. Now, Let's just go back to Isaiah 28 and 16. It says, so this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay the stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who does what? The one who does what? Relies on it. Relies on it. Will never be stricken with panic some say dismay but nevertheless the word means that you won't have to worry the word means that if you rely on God he will always come through for you 
The word means that if you trust on God, then you, should, then, then you will always be energetic about the kingdom of God. It's when we begin to rely on ourselves that we become lethargic. It's when we start thinking about us and our kingdom that we start panicking. But it says those who rely on God will never, ever panic. Amen? Amen. I just want to ask you today, and I want you to think about Jesus Christ, that it was preordained, it was predestined that he would come on this earth and he would die on that cross and shed his blood for you and I. It's not a little thing. It's a heavy thing. He is a father that sacrificed it all for you and I. And it says that the, the prophets and the men of God had laid that foundation, him being the chief cornerstone, that you and I could live a life of freedom and without sin and without gaps in our life that need to be filled with the things of this world. Come on now. I want to ask if you panicked lately. Has there, has there been something in your life that has stressed you out lately? Is, is, is it felt like and you've asked God, you know what, I feel like something has smited me, that something has come against me. I don't understand why I, I'm going through this stuff, but I feel like it. Let me tell you, if you're in Christ, You'll be pressed, but you will not be crushed. In other words, no matter where you think you are, God said, I'm going to bring you out. I've told you time and time again that you're my daughter. And my daughter, come on, shall come out, says the Lord. A lot of times you have been pressed, you have been put in places. But God says, I'm going to renew your strength. And on the wings of an eagle... You will soar again, and joy will be your strength. Where you have gotten weak, God says, I'm going to give you strength, and that strength will be joy, says the Lord. You have to understand that even in positions and systems of this world where you don't think that you can make enough money, God is going to open up doors that you're not going to make enough money. You're going to make more than enough money. And the enemy has attacked you and you not because of the things that have been in your life. He has put things before you to keep you from where God's going to take you, from raising you up. But God is about to break something over your lives that's going to propel you to higher places. The things that you have been through in your life is foundational. And those foundational things is a structure in which God is going to raise you up. That's why it's been so hard. Let me tell you something. You're, when you're sitting here wondering, and I, and, and I got to believe this is for those that are here today. God is saying this. When you look to the left and look to the right, come on, look around you. Who's not here? Who's not here? There has been a shaking in the kingdom of God. Listen to me. Because God has to know who he can trust. Not who is the most perfect. God doesn't need the most perfect people. God doesn't need the most educated people. God doesn't need the wealthiest people. God doesn't need anything but himself. Now, now wait a minute. But what God did promise that upon this rock I will build my church. And the only thing that he wants to build the church with are those rocks, those stones that have been proven to be straight and true. In other words, people that he can trust. So when you look around, you got to realize, and I bind and I reject the thoughts of what all these false prophets saying about a great transference of wealth and how we're going to overtake this earth with wealth and everything else, I'm telling you right now, that's a lie from demons. The Bible says that there will be perilous times. It says that you and I will be challenged in our relationships with God. 
But you know what else it says? It says there's a remnant. A remnant. A remnant are those that have been proven and passed the test. Have you passed the test? Have you stood in the midst of adversity? I guess I don't have no remnant here. <laughs> Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> Has anybody been through hell and back? But you're still trusting God. Because your foundation was on Jesus Christ. So that no matter what has come your way, you still stand. No matter what people has said about you, no matter who's liked you or who hasn't liked you, you have stood. No matter how the devil has lied to you, no matter how your family tries to pull you back, you still stand. You still go forward while they're staying back. See, God's raising up a people in these days to do greater things than we could ever imagine. Cut the, cut the, cut the.